how long does it take to do a PhD? If you come with undergrad, you have to finish your PhD like in five years. But if you come with master's degree, you can do it, finish it like in four years too, as I finished it in four years and that was done. Do you have a mentor at OIST? Uh, yes, I do actually. So in OIST, we, every student is paired with a mentor uh, from their first year and the mentor is a, a principal investigator in OIST which is not necessarily someone that you will end up doing your PhD with. Mm -hmm. So actually, it shouldn't be your supervisor. Yeah, it has to be someone yeah. different. So in case you have something with your supervisor, you go to the mentor. Yeah. So it's kind of the mentor is there for you in case if you have problems, if you have um, issues uh, with your research, with your um, like kind of academic progress, all these things. And uh, yeah, I've been having my mentor for the past five years. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not changed her. She's <laughs> been great to me. She's guided me from the beginning and she's very approachable. Um, and yeah, she's uh, like mentors are great. What yeah. about you? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think like if you do want to join someone's lab, you who is your mentor, you have to change your mentor. Yeah. And also that's possible. You can change your mentor in case you don't get along with them or something happened. But for me, my mentor has been great to me. Yeah. She's actually has given me advice and actually had guide me um, um, in my project. Like she has told me, like, I think this project would do um, is more realistic and you should do this more instead of that one. And so, yeah, she has definitely helped me throughout this journey. I'm an engineer. Am I able to switch to fundamental sciences? Well, first of all, I'm not an engineer, so I can't <laughs> speak from my experience. But uh, we have seen um, like fellow students who yeah. have um, successfully changed from like one field to another. Yeah. Like, even like um, not the same as here, but um, biology to physics. physics, and that's pretty like tough one, yeah. I think. So that seems possible. Yeah, uh, especially I think it goes back to what we said before: be open-minded, embrace yourself to the science and then you can do it. Can I change my field? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. I know biologists that have gone into the quantum field. I know, that's impressive. Craziness. Yeah. And some physics people, they choose like to do the biology here. Mm. Very impressive. Whatever they want. What do you think, what do you think the, I'm not gonna say likelihood, mm. Do you think do you think that one path is easier than the other from physics to biology or biology to physics? I think for the biologists go to the physics is harder than for physics to uh, go to biology. Yeah. Uh, you know how like when you're learning a new language and you have to learn all these new words? Yes. That's what I feel like I will be if I go into biology. Yeah. I think the OIS system about uh, lab rotation is very cool because mm -hmm. uh, you will have one out of field rotation and that rotation usually is not related to your field and like who knows if you're really inspired by that work that you've done and that out of field mm. rotation you can always choose a club and mm. join it yeah yeah what should i do to make my application stronger yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah i think i think like it's good to be proactive in the community or university you are in now and uh, just get involved, show that you're a proactive person, that you're a persistent person, uh, that you're a person who doesn't give up easily because PhD is all about not giving up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, a lot of students have been there many times where almost, we were almost gonna give up, but <laughs> we persist and we stay resilient. So I think doing things that prove that uh, you have this quality and then showing this in your application uh, would, would help. Uh, and also, of course, being proactive, that you're not a lazy person who's just gonna go home and sleep and not work. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to show that you're actually an active person who do things. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. Yeah. I think like outside of your academia, you have to prove that you're actually, like your personality will fit doing a program because it's not just being smart, right? It's also being like, curious and yeah. being, um, strong-willed and yeah. you know strong-minded in order to get through this challenge exactly and yeah. i think it's a kind of misconception about phd students like everybody's like oh you're doing your phd you're smart like uh -huh. i feel with phd students it's some it's an up and down thing <laughs> yeah, like you yeah, know sometimes true. you feel very smart and sometimes it's like the simplest math equation or like yeah. the simplest information i'm just like 
it, it's just in front of me and I have no idea what I know. <laughs> so it's kind of an up and down thing. So it's not about being smart mm -hmm. um, as much as it's about being proactive, persistent, and a curious person who's willing to learn and improve themselves every day. Make sure your motivation to do science comes through. Uh, and also just like make sure that your openness to collaborate and do science not just say in one single field comes through as well and then you will already stand apart from many other applications thank you guys for watching us if you have any other comments or questions please write your comments below in the link and we will get back to you and if you want to know what cool things ice is up to please like and subscribe <laughs> are you gonna cure cancer oh god <laughs> is, you kind of walked into this one uh, are you going to cure cancer solve climate change or build a time machine i get asked about the time machine a lot i don't know why that's people's go-to